Welcome to another episode of Tech One Two. I'm your host, John Campus, CEO of Empist. And with me today, I have Marty Hitzman, Director of Digital. Today, we'll be discussing chat GPT and the AI influence on multiple industries. So let's get started. Thanks for being in the studio today, Marty. Yeah, thanks for having me, John. I'm excited to talk about this. So am I. So what exactly is chat GPT? Well, you know, I actually had to write it down, John, because it's so hard. It's called chat generative pre trained transformer. That's kind of a mouthful. I... <laughs> that, is, that certainly is a, a mouthful. I mean, we've been seeing so much activity on chat GPT from posts, from people talking about it, the news that's talking about chat GPT. And really today what we want to talk about is how is this being used in industries across many different verticals? How's it being used in business? How's it being used personally as well? But we really want to look at use cases. We want to talk about the impact to the overall business and also some issues with uh, something that's so powerful as it is. So uh, let me just ask you, Marty, what are some use cases of ChatGPT? Well, I mean, the big one that I think of is just um, uh, using it to write content, you know, or even doing some discovery or uh, even some research to a certain extent. But the problem with it becomes whatever you ask it, it's kind of like garbage in, garbage out. If you don't ask it correctly or ask it in enough detail or tell it what you want back, it's just going to spit back a bunch of stuff, you know. And some of it is uh, some of it is wrong, you know. So you have to really, once you use it, check it. So how, how would someone check the, the information that's available through ChatGPT? Well, like one of the things we use, we use um, uh, a product called Jasper AI. So that connects into the whole GT GPT-3 uh, ecosystem. And um, what you ask it, you know, like, hey, Jasper, write me a, um, you know, blog article about cybersecurity. And so it'll spit you back, you know, you can tell it 1,400 words, and it'll spit you back 1,400 words. But it might be really repetitive. It also might cover things that are, like, blatantly wrong. It Sometimes it doesn't cite you know, where's this, where's this coming from? So you got to do the research on it and say, does, does this sentence make sense? And you have to do a ton of editing, but okay. it's still like, think about it. Like before you had to go, Oh, well, how do I make cybersecurity interesting? Um, now you can just ask, you know, an AI tool and it'll at least give you like a, you know, it'll uh, get your creative juices flowing. So you can go, Oh, let me go this mm -hmm. way with it. Or I don't like that. Rewrite it again. And it rewrites it so fast that, you know, it, it allows you to kind of work quicker. So it, it isn't, it isn't uh, as cookie cutter. I mean, there's still a lot of work, especially when you just mentioned the example. Obviously, there's many other use cases, which we'll discuss today. But just looking at it from a content perspective, you're not taking content just directly from there. I mean, is it something that um, you have to really cater to and customize? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, and you have to customize it. Uh, based on audiences too. So, you know, you might ask it something general and it might, and then it won't apply to somebody. So you have to customize it yourself. You also have to do, uh, you know, sometimes there's like grammar correction that has mm -hmm. to be done in there. So it was interesting. So, you know, this morning I typed in, you know, I, I wanted to try out some things and, you know, just something simple that it does is it'll spit back like, you know, birthday uh, celebration, you know, so you, you know, say, uh, got any creative ideas for, I'm not going to start the uh, age in there, but, you know, uh, a woman's birthday, you know, and it says, absolutely, here's a bunch of creative ideas, you know, and it puts out personal, private chef experience or spa day. And then it asks you, like, do you want to give this content a thumbs up or thumbs down? And I think the brilliance in what they're doing at OpenAI is they're asking me, like, did you like this? And then I'm telling them, yeah, I loved it. But they, and then they say, okay, do you have any additional feedback? I'm like, well, what about like a private helicopter ride around a city or mm -hmm. tour? Or, you know, um, what about a cruise or something like that? You know, a late cruise. So um, you can give it ideas back and it only make it smarter. So it's constantly learning. Um, you know, the last statistic I saw was 300 million monthly visitors on the OpenAI site. Um, we've also been seeing with so many people hitting the site, um, the site's actually gone down. Um, and it's actually throttling who can actually use this now. Um, if companies are relying on some of this, as we're seeing it more in the industries, because we've seen that there are businesses. There was a study that I saw that um, it was one one out of every four businesses have um, have replaced an employee to a certain extent. It may not be a, a full FTE, but replace certain functions or job responsibilities of uh, that individual through ChatGPT or some other type of AI 
tool. Um, if companies are relying on something like this, what happens when it goes down? Well, I, I don't know. I think that's why, you know, uh, you know, cars took so long for computers. It's like you don't want them stopping and rebooting in the middle of the street. So I think, like, you don't want your business to be rebooted. So there's a couple of solutions to that. One is you can use their upgrade to Plus, you know, chat uh, GPT Plus, or you can get tools like Jasper, mm -hmm. which are really just taking a GUI front end on and making an experience for you so that you can access that. And because you're paying, they're paying them and you're paying them, you know, it, uh, it allows you to stay up, uh, you know, like you don't have a lot of downtime on it. Okay, got it. So ChatGPT set the record for the fastest growing user base, um, and it was launched in November of 2022, I believe, is officially when it went to the public, and it set the record for the largest, the fastest growing user base. Um, we, you, you mentioned OpenAI, OpenAI, which is a nonprofit, um, but as we know, the biggest investor of ChatGPT and OpenAI is Microsoft with ownership of 49%. Um, so when you have a massive giant like that, that has a huge stake in into this product, um, where do you think they're going to take it? I think the sky's the limit. I know that they want to put it into some of their products, including uh, Bing um, uh, Office, you know, so like wherever they can. And what did they put in, like $10 billion? I saw some stat um, uh, on, you know, they were, I think it, OpenAI was looking to get um, like $200 million or something like that and. Or no, so they're they're projecting 200 million in revenue and 1 billion revenue in 2024. But that was before, you know, in January, you know, they had a funding talks that could value that company at 29 billion. Mm -hmm. So of course, Microsoft jumps on this. They have a multi-year deal with them for 10 10 billion dollars reported. You know, yeah. we don't know exactly the amount that uh, Microsoft's going to throw in there. But to me, it's like if Microsoft is jumping into this game, the you know Google probably. They probably still have an edge if, because of just how they, much they use data and search. But I mean, like, the brilliance of chat GPT is that, like, I can say, hey, how do you do this? And it tells me how to do it. Mm -hmm. Like in Google, it'll tell you how to do it, but it'll give you 8,000, you know, 80 million results and it'll give you a couple at the top. Um, but I don't have to go sorting through things, you know, on this. So, so it's definitely a time saver. Um, and when you look at, you mentioned, uh, we mentioned a use case for content. Uh, but let's even talk about it from a technical perspective with Microsoft taking this um, majority stake within the business, within this organization, and wanting to integrate in Azure into more of their Microsoft products as uh, businesses continue to do a cloud transformation. We use an example where we just said, how do you provision a server in Azure? And ChatGPT gave us all the information step-by-step -step of what you need to do. So... We're looking at automations. We're looking at providing people uh, being more efficient in operations. So, you know, certainly we looked at the uh, the content piece of it, but technically, from a technical perspective and other use cases, I see ChatGPT and a lot of these platforms. Um, the best use case, <clears throat> excuse me, is answering questions. You mentioned you had an example. Well, what do you do for this person's birthday? Um, uh, what do you do? How do you provision a server? How do you configure a firewall? How do you reset a password? These types of things, these how-tos, with all the results that Google has, it, it, it definitely makes you work faster. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that's why I said that Google's probably, you know, like, you know they're doing something behind the scenes, but what is it and how, how will it affect Google? Because if, you know, Microsoft, Ken's putting it into Bing, Edge, uh, Microsoft 365, you know there's there's just going to be so much power behind that to help people like really in the end that's all this is it's a you know it, it's helping you be faster be better and you know for a creative person like you know i even did the uh experiment inside jasper ai and i said write me a song about you know um about love lost or whatever and it just fits you out a chorus and then you can say hey re redo that chorus like so i look at that you know, now that's hitting the songwriting industry. Um, and then, uh, you know, Adweek had some articles about, okay, if if um, all these agencies or even songwriters are putting, uh, are writing their stuff with uh, AI, who owns the IP on that? Like, you know, um, do you own it? Do you, or, you know, if, if I wrote something using AI, does the AI own it? Do I own it? Do you, does, you know, does the, am I violating some kind of law or something? We don't know. Like, well, the 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 um, plagiarism 
and um, you know, copyright is absolutely a concern. I'm sure for many businesses, especially if they're going to be using it and making this type of information publicly available. But when we look at the technology, you mentioned Google. You mentioned there's there's many uh, players in this market, and major tech companies, ha especially Google, you know, Meta, they they have a platform similar to this. Uh, chat GPT, many of the many, many of these tech companies just don't make it publicly available. Like, let's not fool ourselves. A lot of this automation AI uh, driven information is available on the back ends of many of these platforms that we're using today, especially from a social um, perspective. So um, these competitors just released uh, competitors of chat GPT, as we mentioned, Google Meta and many others just haven't released it out to the public. So with all this attention on it and ChatGPT going public with it and making this uh, platform available, um, I just expect that this is just going to continue to grow with accuracy because ChatGPT, I believe the the data set they have is from 2021, correct? It's yeah. not it's it's not current set, but I know that they're working on a a more current version. And I just pulled this because I want to see how large of the data was, and as of January of this year. The size of the database was 570 gigabytes. That's not huge. If you look at the amount of, that's not terabytes of data. And when you look at the information that they're providing to you, but it actually, uh, when looking at this, it included a whopping 570 gig um, obtained from books, web texts, Wikipedia articles, and other, piecing, other pieces of writing information on the internet. So this information is available. It's not like they're crafting this information. They're just putting it all together, correct? Oh, oh yeah. There's actually some uh, article that, uh, you know, I was reading from uh, Neil Patel, and he was talking about, you know, like uh, he had this wild, uh, wild number. So um, in in the uh, first, the GTP, there was like five, uh, it was like five billion data sets or something. And then uh, now it's up to, uh, what did he say? It's 100, 175 billion data sets so that doesn't mean you know what you were talking about space this mm -hmm. isn't space this is like groups of things and information so think about that yeah. you know um that's incredible yeah and i saw it was 300 billion words were fed into the system so just imagine you know all this information power at your fingertips you can search literally for anything from fixing a tire from replacing a door from finding uh ideas for for a birthday or configuring firewalls all through a single platform. So let's talk about some of the challenges though in misuse of, of the platform. Um, we talked about copyright, privacy, and any other type of misuse. I mean, what should businesses be concerned about when they're using a platform like this? Well, I mean, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is like employment, you know, like somebody writing a resume, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, rewrite, rewrite this, rephrase this uh, thing in my resume that makes me sound smarter than I than I actually am. Um, the other thing is, um, from a business standpoint is like if you're if you're in a creative shop and you're writing something for for another client. So you're an agency. I'm writing something for a client. And like at what point in time does the client go? What do I need these guys for? I'll just go, you know, I'll do it myself. Like you said, one, what is it? One and four have replaced somebody internally inside. Um, and then the other thing is, is like what I was reading uh, earlier this week was about schools and about kids, you know, writing papers with, hey, you know, hey, chat GPT, write me, a, you know, an article on, you know, um, I don't know, differential uh, math or whatever it is. So are you saying we don't have to retain any information? Um, well, that's the other problem with your brain. Now, you know, how soft is it going to make your brain? You know, as you just reach for these tools, you know, even, even today we say, you know, Hey Alexa, I, I don't want to say Siri because my phone will go off and start asking, you know, answering me. But I mean, you're, you're asking a voice and they're giving you, they're kind of spitting back the same things as Google though. You know, it's, Oh, I found this information on, but I mean, um, you know, just to, if I, I can't ask Siri or, or Alexa to write me uh, a paper, but you can ask, chat GPT or uh, Jasper AI to write you a paper. Mm -hmm. And you think uh, based on the quality of work that's being produced from that, um, let's say you mentioned students in school presenting a, um, a paper or an essay that was written by an AI driven platform, 
you think they're going to be able to spot something like that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think they our teachers are talking about how they go and you know do it themselves, or even you know counter by going, oh, "I'm going to go to Chat GPT and, and write the same thing that this person said and see if it spits back the same results." Mm -hmm. And plus, you know, like we use tools like um, you know, which is really just another AI like Grammarly, you know, to um, to correct content that we write. So sometimes we'll get an idea from Jasper and we'll, we'll write something out. And, but when we're done, we can use that plagiar, uh, plagiarism check inside uh, Grammarly to say, okay, we didn't steal this from anybody. Mm -hmm. um, because that does happen. You know, people cut and paste things out. And I'm sure that's all the, the, that program is doing. Chat GPT is it's saying, let me comb the internet about this topic. And some of that stuff that comes back has to be, it has to be. Mm -hmm. So we know it's not going away. I mean, this this type of technology isn't going away, and we know that ChatGPT is working on their new version that should be available um, by the end of the year, early next year. Um, how should employers really embrace um, the use of this when we look at it just within the workplace? The workplace, there's many, many different use cases. I think people will find uh, different use cases um, on a daily basis of what it can be used for, but how should employers really embrace? Should they... Uh, Make it, make an announcement that we're investing or utilizing this type of tool as an additional, um, you know, knowledge set to make teams more efficient. Uh, for example, on within our business, we look at we provide uh, support services to businesses from a technical perspective. How can we? How can businesses utilize something like that to make the support process more efficient? and faster for the end user to continue improving the client experience for the customer. But, you know, where do we, where do employers really look? I mean, should they be embracing this technology? Should they shy away from it? What should they do? I think they should totally be embracing it. I mean, you know, it's, we always want to do more. And the only way to do more is to have tools that help you be more productive. So, I mean, you know, in the case of like our business, like can you imagine if we can put some sort of AI behind, um, you know, uh, uh, help desk support, you know, so, so our first level people can actually do second level things or harder things that uh, need to be solved. You know, the user can kind of self, um, self help themselves. You know, if, um, Hey, if you're in sales, you know, Hey, how do I write some compelling text? You know, write me some compelling text to, you know, convert somebody faster. You know, um, you can use it in there, um, in, you know, shortcutting like technical documentation on, you know, on things, you know, it can help you and aid you. And, you know, it's not just chat GPT, you know, um, or Jasper or something, you know, there's other tools out there like Grammarly that it can help you write things better and faster, uh, to improve it. So like we should embrace it, mm -hmm. you know, and communication is every, still everything. Um, so, um, as we use these tools, we should, uh, it should also improve our communication with each other. So for all the risks that these types of platforms, um, um, pose to, at, uh, to an employer, employees i mean they should certainly le they should leverage the benefits oh totally they should leverage the benefit but you do bring up a, a good point like the risks and things like you know what happens if you're you know you're feeding back information into the machine you know that's uh private or you know like how does what's the security implication on that too like you know what if you know a, a large corporation is is you know got all the employees using this and the machine's starting to learn about the business you know mm -hmm. that, I don't know about that. You know, that's about my paper. That's probably more in your wheelhouse. Well, well, the the machine is constantly learning. So every input that uh, users are entering within the platform, they're retaining that. That's their information now. And now they're trying to make their system smarter and smarter. So absolutely. Imagine someone goes in there and puts some confidential information that is proprietary or unique to the business or to their clients. That would, that would be a, a big concern for me and I'm sure for many other businesses, not just in the tech space, but just across, you know, any type of intellectual property that a business may have that may now become available in, uh, in the public, uh, the public spectrum. Yeah. And that's one of the things you always talk about is like, what's, what's our biggest threat, uh, you know, here to our business is people, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. lack of training knowledge, you know, if they, you know, we have all the training with no before, you know, um, to make sure that we're not clicking on things that we shouldn't. We're mm -hmm. looking, you know, think about that. Somebody's using this and like you said, feeding it into the machine and you just inadvertently, you're trying to do something good for work and you inadvertently, you know, put out, uh, I don't know, maybe some, you know, uh, uh, something that's private or, or something that's, uh, um, you know, an IP to us. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, personally, I really like the the answering questions capabilities of it. it. Just being able to answer questions that can simplify the search that you may be looking for. But I also know that developers are using the platform to write lines of code. You know, for example, um, what's what's the code to create a contact form in WordPress? And it's spitting out all the code. So we looked at content, we looked at technical, we looked at development. Can you think of any other way, uh, other things that, uh, other ways that businesses can use ChatGPT? Well, yeah, well, I, I want to stay on the uh, development thing because uh, I just got uh, an email the other day from uh, from a company that's actually putting out like the first WordPress AI site. So it'll actually create your, you, you put in inputs like, you know, oh, our name of our company's Empus, you know, here's our, um, you know, our mission and vision promise or whatever. Uh, here's the kind of personality that we want to write in. And uh, here's the kind of imagery we want to use. And it will go out and build your site. And then not only do that, but it will every day update your content to the latest SEO search and everything. And that's, so back to you, what can other, what can companies use it for? SEO definitely like mm. is, would be helpful in uh you know with chat gpt or any of those other tools like um you know we're, we're embarking on our own uh, seo updates and things like that so this can really help us with that so when you say on the seo side i mean what what exactly on the seo side can you see this well, use I mean, for you you're talking about asking questions like i can ask the question like you know what are the most common keywords used in you know it services or something like that and rather than you know right now that still with like products like uh, SEMrush or, or um, AHERS, I think, AREFs or whatever. And um, I know Neil Patel's got his thing, uh, Uber Suggest or whatever. Like that's using AI too, but like you still have to funnel through that stuff. Like this can actually probably kick that off uh, faster and make and make you quicker. Like what might have taken us two weeks of research to do maybe can be done mm -hmm. in five days. You know? Do you think with the, the rapid changes within the industries and we talked about seo marketing content um with the data set being from 2021 um do you think that poses a big challenge i i don't i don't think so because they, like you said they're going to release you know something else uh by the end of this year um and i think like it, what really got released it was gpt uh three but like it's actually running 3.5 when they launched in um in October or November mm -hmm. last year. So, you know, I'm sure from those, just that half, you know, 0 .0, uh iteration, it's probably, you know, they'll get there. Mm -hmm. So when we look at uh, a business, um, considering this, we've, we've given a number of use cases today. Um, how would you recommend that a business steps into something like this? Well, I mean, the easiest thing to do is just go get a, um, uh, you know, account with OpenAI and start uh, working with Chat GPT, and then you know, secondarily, you know, if you need if you need it to be more available, go get a product like Jasper AI and and uh, start start there. And you know, the 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 benefit of Jasper is probably that there's already a bunch of people using it. You know, they've been used. You know, it's been around for a couple of years. So. Um, there's a lot of different like plays in there and things. So and templates that you can go leverage and, and so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Like even aside Jasper, there's, um, uh, there's a thing in there for you. Like I want to, uh, you know, brainstorm marketing ideas, or I want to come up with, uh, YouTube video ideas. So or, to be clear, we're not affiliated with Jasper. No, no, we're, we're not, not affiliated. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> the you sponsor know. of this program is not Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, I'm just using that because it's a common, you know, common mm -hmm. platform. Yeah. But, uh, out in the market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting buying it or recommending. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, it's another tool that accesses, uh, GP, chat GPT and, um, uses their product on a paid basis. Yeah. So I, I love available. the, I love the brainstorming piece of it because that may be a way that a business, you know, right now we have business owners listening to this, but many other, uh, levels within a business as well, different titles, responsibilities, just go create a free account, create an account, go to the website, enter some, ask a question and you'll be amazed by the response that you get. And it's actually typing out the response faster than you could probably even read it, which is amazing. So yeah, stepping into it, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't recommend just buying a product like this or subscribing to it and saying, okay, uh, 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 Tom, Bill, and John, you guys are gone because we're using 
this this new platform and the study that I mentioned. I mean, there's many different surveys and studies. You know, when we look at one one of four are replacing something that people are doing, or um, even replacing that individual entirely. We've seen uh, publishing companies that. Um, I don't recall the name of that of that firm, but there was a I saw an article recently in the last couple of weeks that uh, a firm out in the UK uh, reduced their staff by sixty five percent. I saw that, yeah. Utilizing this type of tool, so I I would not recommend you know going to that extreme, especially you know there are there are some challenges. We mentioned challenges. There could be. Um, I mean, there could be legal issues with it too. We don't know. You know, there's, I'm sure there's uh, some legality of some of the information, although it's publicly available. I think the plagiarism, the copyright. So you you don't want to put yourself in a difficult spot from a business side of things. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. And, and you know, like, we're, you know, somebody's going to figure out, like, something to sue somebody on or or blame somebody or you know that's just the nature of business you know like even look at all the platform uh, you know who's responsible if i publish something on twitter you know that's not that's misinformation or something like that mm -hmm. you know there's they're trying to debate the law on that you know so it's only a matter of time till it hits this mm -hmm. this industry um you know and the replacing an employee thing you know i i like the example of the mcdonald's across the street like if you go in there there's there's like five or six boards, double-sided, where they can take orders. Well, you still need somebody to crank those orders out. So there's still a ton of people working behind the line, you know, bagging things fast. And sometimes, but it's helped them deliver product to people quicker, especially during uh, busy times. So mm -hmm. you know, that's an example of technology that we thought was going to take somebody's job that probably didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, just made the business more efficient. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people need to f uh, fill those orders, but also that technology needed to be developed by some people. So, you know, there was a shift there. And somebody's got to fix the technology. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's where we can help you yeah. out. So when we look at tech companies specifically, I mean, being in the tech industry, uh, I saw last week uh, Shopify, um, who else was it? Snap. Many big players in the market are now integrating their service into a chat GPT or AI driven platform like this. And that's where I see from a tech perspective, a lot of low hanging fruit, because this information that's available in this, this 570 gig gig database, 300 million words um, continues to grow. So as a technology integrator, being able to integrate into their API to pull this information and to be able to uh, provide a better experience for your clients, is where I see the biggest opportunity from a tech industry perspective to be able to tie into it, censor it, filter it, make sure that you're presenting your customers uh, with the information that's relevant to your business so that you can provide a much better service to your customers. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. And Shopify has been kind of doing, they've been leveraging some sort of AI to begin with. Like when you you know, you go buy a pair of shoes and it says, oh, other people who bought that shoes also bought this stuff. You know, Amazon does it all the time. Uh, you know, you look at a watch or online and all of a sudden in your email next day is like 50 different versions of a watch you were looking at. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it's nothing new. It's just making it better. And, and you know, I think I probably misquoted um, uh, the Neil Patel article. He said, uh, you know, uh, NLG, Turing NLG, which was another uh, kind of same similar product, 10 billion parameters, while uh, GT, GPT-3 has 175, bil 175 billion parameters. Like wow. parameters, not just, like I said before, yeah. it's, or the data set or whatever. It's not just one, you know, it's not just data. It's groups of data, you know. Um, so I, I think all that stuff helps businesses. And the, and the smarter Shopify or those tools can get, the better it is for you as a consumer you know, to absorb things that, oh, you know, I didn't even think I wanted that, you know, yeah. but now I do. So I think we're, run, we're running on time here. Uh, Marty, do you have any closing remarks? Um, yeah, my closing remarks is just, you know, get go get an account at chat GPT and play with it, you know, like ask it questions, you know, help make it smarter so that it benefits all of us, mm -hmm. you know, but don't plagiarize anything. Absolutely not. And we'll, let, as we wrap up, just looking at these key findings, I want to I want to give you some last uh, last minute stats. If you ha aren't considering to use or even uh, look at it yet, forty nine percent of companies currently use JetGPT. Thirty percent of them plan to 
uh, continue to use it and to invest into more of those products. 48% of the companies using ChatGPT say it has replaced workers, as I mentioned. 25% of companies using ChatGPT have already saved $75,000 or more by investing into this tool. 93% of current users say they plan to extend their use of ChatGPT, and 90% of business leaders say ChatGPT experience is a beneficial skill for everyone. So we really want to thank you for being here today on our ChatGPT podcast. We'll see you soon.